Yesterday, the Alberta government announced that it's going to be launching a geothermal policy and strategy. And uh, what they plan to do is they're gonna go out and talk to some, uh, some stakeholder groups, and then they're gonna come back and introduce legislation and create the policy and regulatory framework to develop geothermal power generation. To talk, to, talk about that announcement, we've got Alison Thompson, who is the chair of the Canadian Geothermal Energy Association. Alison, lovely to see you again. Thank you, Mark, and it's wonderful for the invitation, and I can't wait to talk about my favorite, my favorite topic. Well, look, let's get right to it. Uh, give me your reaction to yesterday's announcement. Uh, you know, because we were there in person, seeing the sincerity, the intent, and the enthusiasm, it, it really, for us, it, it leapt off the page. I mean, this, this is far more for us an announcement than it is a moving forward. And uh, you know, we've all known about this energy literally for decades, but it, it takes uh, elected officials and communities and stakeholders to come together and want to do something. So no amount of, of announcement written down is going to get this industry moving forward. It's going to be individuals of passion. And you know, looking at uh, Minister Sonia Savage's you know, eyes yesterday and, and her support staff and the MLAs that, that showed up as well, uh, this is now, as she said, it, it is going to happen. Well, that's excellent. That's really uh, good news. And uh, I mean, geothermal is well known as a, uh, an emission free way to generate electricity. And you uh, set, certainly with Alberta's uh, oil and gas wells, which I gather may or may not, we'll see what happens. But they, that could be a source of, uh, or it could, they could be used to generate geothermal. And I'll leave it at that. What's the potential for geothermal power generation in Alberta? Right, and actually I brought my, my prop with me. So I'm, I'm drinking tea today and uh, for any coffee or, or tea drinker, it, it's this hot water that actually has far more value and flexibility than just making electricity. So making electricity, you're gonna need this to be physically boiling and that's over hundred degrees Celsius. In Alberta, most of our reservoirs are not going to be at that temperature. Uh, but what you're going to have is um, certainly the ability to, to space heat, you know, the, the rooms that you and I are in right now and, and the, the people watching. Uh, but anything above 40 degrees Celsius is, is otherwise used uh, by, by propane, a diesel, or a natural gas to heat, which obviously are, are fossil fuels and, uh, and combustible fuels. Uh, geothermal can penetrate this market into that above 40 degrees Celsius and up to about that 100 degrees Celsius. There's far more market for applications of heat than there are going to be locations for electricity. But again, that electricity, we do have that as well, just in a more limited reservoir areas of the province. Well, this sounds like one of those uh, all of the above energy strategies. And I'm, I'm certainly there's a lot of people that are happy to see Alberta you know, pivoting to this kind of an approach. So what are the obstacles to achieving geothermal's potential in Alberta? Well, I'd like to maybe connect with, with some of your viewers around, uh, you know, the, maybe the, the idea of that polarity. I, I, I'm from the oil and gas industry. I, I um, you voluntarily left it over a decade ago because I was so enthusiastic about the technology transfer of geothermal, but that doesn't mean that we shun oil and gas. I wouldn't know what I know today without having those skills, that education, that experience. And I'd really like to reach out to your viewers and, and say, if we all want to move forward and create more jobs, so oil and gas and geothermal and hydrogen and lithium, we need to, to maybe do a, a personal check in and stop being so negative on Facebook and LinkedIn and, and Twitter and social media. We, to move forward, we need to embrace all the ands and, and not try to pit things against each other. Uh, I mean, certainly talking to uh, people on the drilling rig floor, they're happy to work. And, and they're also learning as well and, and a bit surprised that, you know, while there's other dangers, you know, scalding water as an example, uh, you know, there's not emissions or, or um, things, oil, you know, falling on, on the rig floor or, or on the lease site. Uh, it, it's cleaner. It, it's easier to work in that environment. You know, these are jobs that people want, not, oh, I'll take that job because I don't have my other job. Well, I, I argued in a column recently that the best way to approach this is uh, the way that um, economic development ec uh, economists do, which is to think of the dominant industry, in this case, hydrocarbons in Alberta, as what they call a growth pole. And then you look at uh, backward linkages, which is inputs into that industry. You look at forward 
linkages, which is processing more of the raw material, turn it into something else. And then you look at technology uh, linkages, which could be something like geothermal, and all of those work together. So you're not creating something, you know, like you're not importing Amazon. You're, you're working with and, and diversifying, I guess, what you have. And so I see the geothermal fitting very well into that kind of an approach. Absolutely. Allison, thank you very much for this. And uh, I'm sure that geothermal, uh, this is a big boost for it. And we'll be talking to you again in the future. Thank you so much, Markham.